couples and families find it difficult to be with each other. There are increasing number of conflicts, arguments at homes while we are confined to our homes. So it goes without saying that marriage is not an easy affair. Marriage is complex by its very nature. So maybe as we go through this difficult time of the lockdown, it's good for us to try to delve into the complexities of marriage. With that intention, we thought that it is good for us, for all of you to, to learn from what the psychology, the science of psychology has shown us through its study and research. So tonight in our discussion, we are basing ourselves on one of the findings of Sheila Sharp, a well-known psychotherapist who wrote a book on complexities of marriage, which was titled, The Ways We Love. The Ways We Love, not the ways we hate, but the ways we love. And she came out with the finding that there are five stages for all marriages. Now, when I say that there are five stages, you might wonder, what are they? So let's start with the first stage according to this research finding. The first stage, she says, is the romantic stage. So what this scientific theory proposes is that practically each and every couple in the early stages of their relationship, they will have this lovey-dovey, beautiful time where you feel that you are in the clouds. That's what they say. I'm not married myself, so therefore we have to ask those who have gone through it. So therefore, let's now listen to Shan and Chanika who are here with us. Shan, please tell us, did you have a romantic stage in your relationship? Yes, Father. Um, just like any other couple, um, we too had a very, uh, you know, beautiful romantic stage. And we, uh, we used to spend a lot of time together. Um, I, I remember, Father, those days when uh, uh, from office I used to go straight to see Chanika. Um, going to see her also, then we fell into long chats. And um, even my in-laws uh, at that time, they were finding very difficult to ask me to go home because when it was late, they used to come and say, Shian, I think your mother is waiting for you. And that's how they used to tell me, uh, isn't it Charika? Yeah. So once Shian goes home, he used to call and say that he reached home safely. So even these calls are long calls followed by long chats. So that's how we always try to get connected with each other. So and also we tried making the other person happy every time. So whenever I said I like something, he would go out of the way to get it for me. Once I can remember, I said I like to eat pomegranate and it wasn't freely available at that time, like not like these days, but he somehow got it for me the very next day. But the funny thing was, whenever he sees pomegranate, he used to bring, and I really got fed up eating also. <laughs> so that's how like he loves to eat desserts. So I make desserts every day. He comes to my place. So that's uh, how it was a very romantic and a wonderful time. Uh, there's a little experience, Father, I would like to mention. Once when I went to see Chanika, I think it was on a Sunday. So when we when we were set to have lunch, then Chanika's mother came and said, Shian, you got a special dish today. So when you say a special dish, Father, Shian being a pork lover, what do you expect on the... <laughs> so I was expecting a nice pork dish. And you know what came on before me? It was a brinjal moju. I don't like brinjals at all, right? So, but uh, Chanika's mother, she said, Uta, you know who made this? It was Chanika who made it. And it was served in my plate and she asked me, Shian, how's it? I said, wow, it's nice, delicious. So 
you know, things like this also, Father, we used to do during this time because we used to do things to make each other happy. And when you, when you ask me, if I, you ask me, Father, like what you see, saw in Chanika, I saw a beautiful girl, very innocent, soft-spoken. That was also, um, she was the eldest in the family. She had another two uh, brother, sisters and a brother. And she used to take a lot of responsibility because her father was a businessman and he was also engaged in the business. He used to, uh, you know, help the father. So I, uh, so it was very uh, nice. And I also was thinking well, the ideal partner that I should, I could have was Chanika. Yeah, we felt like uh, we were a match made in heaven. We, were, we, everything we were very easily, we were uh, like, we uh, agreed upon if, or almost everything. So, and also uh, we shared everything. We, our joys, our sorrows, and even pain we used to share. So those days I get, this kata was very badly, I get affected. So the days I got it, it was really hard for me. I had heavy head and runny nose and I couldn't do much work on those days. So I saw Shian how hard it was for him to see me like this. He found it really difficult seeing me and I, I felt with, from his expressions that he would take that pain from me if he could do that. So I saw him such a caring and a loving husband and I was so blessed to have a husband like that and we were a very happy couple. The experience of this father went on uh, even during our first uh, years in our marriage. I remember Chanika was pregnant during the first year and uh, it was a time that I caught uh, chicken pox. So then uh, my, my mother and her parents, they were having a chat because it was too dangerous for, the, for her and the baby. So they wanted uh, us to stay separate. So um, at that time, um, the, finally the decision was that the father came and took Chanika uh, to her, their place for the 14 days, uh, like the quarantine period now we are facing. So, but that 14 uh, days, father, it was like 14 months for me. It was so difficult. I, re I still remember, I used to stand near the door when she went and I was thinking and every day we used to talk to each other and I was really feeling that part of me was missing father during this uh, 14 days. Yeah, it was, it was the same with me. I, I really missed a lot. I missed him a lot. Though I was with my parents and my siblings, I felt something was empty. And that was such uh, our bond was we, we were a very happy and a very uh, loving couple at that time. Yes. Now to all of you who are listening to this conversation, I'm sure you can relate to your experience of the romantic stage. Because when I listened to both of you, what I could see is that there was genuine bonding, there was a strong relationship. But then at the same time, if you listen carefully to your story, there were also this playing games. You know, you, you have certain of your dislikes, but you don't talk about it. You don't agree with whatever the other person is doing, but you can deal with it. Yes. You know, that's exactly what the gist of your experience of the romantic stage is. Now, then Sheila Sharp, having studied many couples in so many experiences of their social living standards and what different uh, skin colors, different education levels, she came out with this finding. That is, every couple that goes through the initial stage of the relationship, which she calls the romantic stage, which you have now related, she says there comes a time, maybe it's after two years, maybe it's after a week, it can happen to some of them maybe after five, ten years, or it depends on each couple, but there comes the hard reality of the stage, which is the second stage, which she calls the disappointment, and this this illusional stage now from the from the naming itself what she is saying here is that you have lived in an illusionary kind of a relationship so now you come 
out of that illusion. So that's why she calls it disillusional stage. Yes. So how are you going to connect with that? Did you even have that kind of stage? Uh, I guess for the with our uh, responsibilities at that time, I guess uh, we were in uh, different directions. Um, I used to, I remember I used to work very uh, hard and late, come home very tired, and when I came home also I saw Chanika uh, more occupied with the kids, uh, and and had a little time for me, and I guess even the attention to each other was very low. And from me, father, when uh, because you know when we work, we also carry a lot of stress, and we used to, you know, I used to, I prefer you know hanging out with my friends, having chats. So I used to come home late also. Um, uh, and I felt that Shyam, most of his time was spent outside, like uh, with his friends and of his colleagues. So, which we used to have together, like we had so much time together those days, but now the time have become so less that we could have together. So, it really made me upset and I saw a different Shian, not the way he used to be. Like even when we were to go on a trip or something, uh, I preferred going with Shian and the kids to have some family time. But that, that's not what Shian wanted. He always wanted his friends to join in. So not only that, even when we go for a party, even like he would have a fun time with his friends. Sometimes I'm just left alone all by myself. So it, I sometimes I wondered like whether she whether Shian really loved me like it was a time uh, a period full of uh, disappointments and worries and brokenness so I was so hurt and I used to go to my shell and did not speak with him for days for me father when you say go you got a trip um Without friends, it's actually the, what she was wanting to go was only four of us. So for me to go on a trip like that, it was like staying at home, which that was not me. And even when she says, okay, we go for a party. And sometimes there are parties, father, we go and we, uh, the men, they sit separate and the women, they sit separate. But yeah, for me, father, to go in and sit in next to Chanika in with the other women, it's so awkward for me. So... I, I didn't like that. And every time I used to remember when, you, when we went on a trip or when we went after a party, there were a lot of arguments both of us had because she used to come always say, come on, don't you love me? What is wrong? You're, you're not, uh, you're, when you go somewhere, your attention with them, no, you're not, you're not with me. So I, I really couldn't understand her at that time. And I was feeling very disturbed. Come on, because I can't be, you know, behind her all the time when you go with friends. So, things like that. So, yeah, then I started seeing uh, Chanika being changed and the innocence, the Chanika has now changed. And many times I used to see uh, her with long faces. And then I, to avoid that father, I also work late and I came home late. And the other thing I must mention, father, some other things that I, it really uh, hurt me. I always wanted her to be organized. Like uh, when I used to go out, I, I, I remember when, when, I, when, when I go out, I used to always put a small chit. I used to write things what I had to do, put it in my pocket and I used to take and I used to see that those things are done. So when, when, we, when Chanika went for groceries also, I used to say, Chanika, why oh, you to list them down and go? But in her case, what she goes and she takes everything and you come home and say, Shane forgot the oil. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> I, I get angry. And uh, another thing was that uh, made me even, uh, you know, worked up was about, she was never concerned about time. Um, I remember father, uh, my father used to tell me, Shian, you need to work on time and you need to be there. And I, in my school also, I was a prefect, and um, which also gave me that discipline of working on time. And even when I started working, the first boss I met with was also saying, Shan, come on, you need to work on time. So this working on time thing was in, in my bloodstream. 
So when I used to tell her, she it seems that she was not very bothered about it. And when we want to go out and I say, okay, Shanika, we are going at seven. I still see her taking her own cool time and, you know, getting dressed. So that really, uh, you know, uh, you know, made me go mad. Uh, child. Yes. And uh, Shian expected me to work on time, but it wasn't easy for me with the kids. I had to look into so many things. And the other hand, uh, it really annoyed me, Shian trying to control me every time, trying to tell me what to do and all that. So I actually, he didn't change any of his ways. He never didn't bother to change his ways the way I wanted. So I also didn't uh, want to do that. I also was doing tit for tat. So this is what I, I felt broken and I felt uh, it's enough. Like I felt like quitting. It was, uh, there was a limit for my tolerance too. Yes, it's very interesting when you listen to both of you uh, referring to your experience of the first stage romantic stage you made it sound like it was a perfect union perfect match and life was going to be this beautiful experience of oneness that's what you felt earlier but now when we listen to your experiences related to the second stage you can see that you get stuck there and also, as I listened to Shamika carefully, she even said, I felt like quitting. Now, for you weavers, it's very important that Sheila Sharp, in her, in her theory, she says that most of the couples would end up either getting separated or divorced or even find their, you know, partners outside marriage during this time if they fail to deal with it you see this is the most important thing where you have started with all the beautiful dreams that you can ever have and then you are coming out of the illusion as it were you are beginning to see the real person within because as you if you if i if any of you listen to them carefully you can see that the real man is now coming out the real woman is coming out so you're not ready to, to, to take that truth of the other person, the dark side of the other. So now, therefore, it is very important that we, especially those of you who are married, who are going through these stages, and especially those of you who have even thought of separation or divorce, it's important that you understand that is, this is part and parcel of life. Every couple goes through it. If you are married to the younger brother of Jesus Christ or younger sister of Blessed Virgin Mary, maybe you will not have this stage. But if you are married to a normal human person, yes, this is what you have to deal with. So now, the third stage, according to Sheila Sharp, is the time where a couple needs to or have to learn to understand the differences in each other and also to learn to accept the differences because you're not going to change the other person to be like you. For example, listening to you both carefully, you wanted the other person to be like you, but that doesn't happen. So that is why in the third stage, you have to learn to accept the differences and then also to, to, to be able to accept each other with the differences. So how do you both relate to that, Shanik? Uh, yeah, uh, Father, uh, conflicts in marriage is quite uh, normal because when you look at, uh, you know, two different people coming from two different backgrounds, start uh, living together. And these conflicts is uh, something that, Father, you come to know each other as well. And uh, uh, at this stage, Father, I think you need a good level of communication with each other. Because, say, say, for an example, you drive a car. You see, a, suddenly you see a, a red light on the dashboard. What do you normally do? We normally stall and, you know, we check out and see what's up. Because if you continue to drive, you might end up with a, uh, an accident or the car will stall. So you normally stall, uh, stop and, you know, pause for a while and see what's going on. 
so likewise also for the what i would say is we need to uh, you know pause for a while and then uh, 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 and you know check with each other but not not at the very same time maybe uh, when you uh, get back uh, maybe uh, when the days go over and you go to bed we have a chat and ask each other what's what's what was up because it was really worrying and uh, to speak out about our feelings yeah i feel like most of the couples as we also did like when a conflict or argument happens like we tend to ignore that we don't talk with each other we most of the time the husband might walk out of the house and have a drink with his friends or the 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 wife would be at home crying and telling her feelings with her friends or mother or sisters so that is not the right thing to do you need to speak out with each other you have to tell about your feelings there shouldn't be anything that you have to hide uh, between couples like everything you should be able to talk to each other there's nothing to be afraid of or to be ashamed of so through these conflicts only we can get to know each other better so use these conflicts to know the person better rather than falling apart that's what i can tell through this uh, our, through our experiences and chanika you would like to say what yeah, you and your feelings also were? yes as i said before like at our first stage second stage i felt like quitting i said but through our communication like i felt that divorces or separations were not in our families and also i knew our pa- kids need parents so i i thought we have to somehow like run an extra mile to somehow make our marriage work so that's how we i said like uh, we have to we talk over with each other about our problems and then i and we both of us start praying also and that's how we face this situation and through these things like through our through our exper- uh, communication level at this stage i started seeing the good side of him like all this time i was i thought i was expecting too much from him that's why all these problems i had too many complaints and all that but now with with uh, with our uh, level of communication i started seeing the good side he was working very hard and also he did that for the best for our family to give the best for our family and also he was a good father as well and was a faithful husband and i saw everybody talking good about him though i didn't see that so this is how i started seeing the good side of him though there were uh, bad things but still i started seeing the good side of him too um, i also started father although there were a lot of disagreements there was something that i realized we had loved you know that still there was love i saw chanika's attention more towards uh, children and most interestingly to my even to my mother because uh, you know my mother used to tell everything to her rather than speaking to me and even her medicine her taking her for the checkups she used to do so there was a lot of love and attention and even when she cooked i must say she was you know very careful with the Uh, the nutrition values of the food and then even uh, separate cooking even for my mother because she was a diabetic so to what i would want to mention here father is actually uh, another thing that i must mention is also about the differences we carry as males and females um now when you say about chanika her life is centered towards uh, you know uh, the family in my case it's uh, you know uh, it's distributed because i used to t- i will because it's only a part of my is with the family another part goes to my workplace another part goes to the my even to my uh, school uh, being a old boy and i'm much engaged with college activities 
So another part goes there, another part towards my uh, religious activity that I'm engaged with church. So, but in her case, it's only the family. So when you, when you always, you know, when I'm engaged with those things, it's always that she gets disturbed, right? The other thing is about, say, suppose father, we, if you have a uh, sort of uh, argument in the morning, uh, when I leave home, I go to office, it's another whole thing for me. I can forget that and I start work over there. And if I go from office to another meeting elsewhere, it's another setup. But in Chanika, it would not be like that because she will take the entire day thinking about the incident that took place in the morning. So uh, that's how men and females are. Sometimes people ask, ask me, why, why isn't he thinking like me? I say, okay, he's a man, he's not a woman. Right? So these are differences that uh, men and female carry as well. And also other personality difference like what I told you father before and and also things like we carry from our families. Uh, so I, I think father these differences, uh, the good Lord, you know, unites us. The differences that I carry is what lacks in her and what lacks in her is what I carry. And that's how the fullness, uh, you know, you say the two becomes one. That's how the fullness comes. And these differences are, Father, to more, more or less like uh, to criticize all, but it should be celebrated because those are very beautiful experiences. And, and that's what the, the Creator wants us to do. Listening to both of you, and also, my dear friends, those of you who are listening, uh, it's important that you draw from the experiences of Shan and Shanika because romantic stage was beautiful, it was life enriching, it was illusionary, but then the second stage, you come out of the illusion, you come out of the, the facade or the persona, and you begin to see the, the differences. But you see, it's, I believe, the way that marriages fall apart today, and how much the divorces are going up and the separations are becoming commonplace. It's easier said than done, I believe, because if it is so easy, like what you say, many couples would survive the, the storms of these differences. So, of course, both of you break out that you were beginning to see the differences and you were willing to accept them. That's basically what Sheila Sharp comes out with. But then there is this challenge, which I think it's very important for any of you who is out there to learn. How do you learn these differences, recognize them, and how do you integrate those? Because if according to what you say, yes, of course, you began to see the good side of the man and the good side of the woman, very true, but then I'm sure it takes a lot of time because it doesn't happen overnight. And so therefore, we will now go to the fourth stage, which is what Sheila Sharp says. If there is a time of modulation and integration, which, which means that you are now seeing the dark side of the man, but also see the good side of the person. And then you, you need to begin this dance together because when you are in a, in a dance, you have to so learn to take your steps, give in and take in, and learn learning this modulation, as she says, and integrating these differences. How do you relate to this stage, which Sheila Sharp is talking about? The stage of modulating and integrating the differences and growing into a happy couple. Uh, at this stage, Father, um I thought we shouldn't fight. Instead, uh, I looked at various ways of reducing the conflicts. Uh, now, when you say, uh, when I, the, the biggest thing that I was expecting from her was about working on time. I used to tell her, when I when we had to go out at 7, I used to tell her, Chanika, we need to go at 6.30, giving her a little bit of a buffer for her to <laughs> take extra 30 minutes to get dressed. And Chanika, you 
Yes. So by this time, I had studied him very well, and I knew where things go wrong. Like uh, he he's a man who works on time, so I had to do uh, accordingly. And also, there are times that uh, things are going wrong as well. So then I see his temperature meter rising, and I know things are going a little bad. Then what I do is I just talk about something about our kids or neighborhood incident or whatever, and then try to distract him uh, his attention so that uh, his uh, he will cool down. So like uh, when things like uh, even when driving even. He, he would get angry with the people on the road and he would drive fast. Then I know what the reason, the real reason behind it. So all what I do is just try to cool him down, try to talk about some things and because I know ultimately this anger will come on to me. So I try to do things in order to uh, make things better. So also not only that like uh, I also try to modulate things like writing down the list when I'm going for grocery and all that because I know I'm not going to lose anything by doing that. Actually, it will help me to keep the peace and harmony in our home. So things like this I started doing. Even further, like when we went for parties, I know uh, Chanka needs a lot of attention. She's an introvert and I'm extrovert in characters. So when we went for parties even, I always made a point to come and see Chanika wherever, whenever, because I know she is not comfortable and come and introduce uh, my, one of my friend's uh, wives maybe and to just to do a small kickstarter for them to have a small chat. And or even if I just come and ask her, Chanika, did you, can I get you something to drink or eat? Or That was good enough for her because all what she wanted was a little attention. and. Uh, even when we went out, even I used to come and ask her, uh, Chanika, uh, are you okay? And even if you go on a trip with my friends, I used to come to her and, you know, put my arm around her and, you know, that always kept her happy and, uh, you know, uh, kept things going, you know. Yeah. So Shia knew that, uh, he, that I like uh, being with him, like spending time with him alone. So he make, made it a point to take me out for a dinner or for a film once in a way. So that really made me great and I felt like we are in the romantic stage again. So the father, I even felt this, great. Uh, what she was telling, this little time for both of us is something that I think we should always have. Sometimes when we uh, come to the stages of uh, marriage, we think that's very silly to, you know, to of us to go out, but what it needs in uh, to for a good family life. Listening to Shan and Chamika, I am sure that those of you who are watching this program would be able to relate to what they are talking about, because when it comes to this time of modulation, because as I said, it's not going to be easy because it's going to take some time. And it, of course, in your case, you say that uh, you were praying about it and you trust in God and uh, you sort of wanted to somehow make this marriage work. I mean, there was that determination because sometimes some couples just don't have it. You know, they just leave it and they just don't want to think about it. Because if you have had a good romantic stage, and if you have had a good time of, you know, disappointment and disillusionment, and if you also move on to the other level where you integrate the differences and learn to modulate, as it says, learning the guns of being with each other, then you will come into that which Sheila Sharps calls as mature love. Now, when it comes to mature love, uh, it doesn't mean, according to the theory, that you both will not have your conflicts. That you Absolutely. both, or any couple for that matter, would be without conflicts and differences and arguments and hurt feelings and all that is combined. But you do have that 
maturity within you in maturity of the relationship which will make you learn to be with each other and in spite of the differences in spite of the conflicts and disappointments that you will grow in your relationship that's what this mature love is all about now i'm sure it will be very interesting for the viewers to know having gone through all the stages that the, the theory is talking about how do you describe your mature love are you really in a mature love stage in the first place and how do you how do you explain that how do you justify that mature love experience between both of you do you have it yes father at this stage actually shian getting angry was not a big issue for me like those days it was not the same like when he gets angry i get panicked and i also shout and cry and all that but now it's not like that what i do is i take a step back and i start i try to be as calm as possible and maybe on a later time i would speak with him about that inc incident and make him understand where things went wrong so that is how uh, we uh, deal th these uh, in incidents at this time of uh, our st uh, stage of our life and also like uh, shian's engagement in other activities have not lessened like it have got even worse too many things like uh in church office and college everywhere you name it everything he is in that so but i have realized he is a man who want to be in the run every time he like uh, to work a lot so he doesn't enjoy being at home just sitting and relaxing is not his way so i have understood and i have let him have his ways and also there are times like uh, so many things fall in together where he become really busy and stressed and we hardly have time to talk with each other so actually as a human being obviously i am getting upset at that time like uh, i would have a long face and he would understand that so what he does is he would take a day or two off later and try to catch up with what we missed so that's how we are uh, at this point uh, i'll just share an example father um uh one day actually from home i i had to go for this meeting directly from home to this meeting and i was getting dressed and um chan can you father that i was not even going to have a cup of tea that morning so what she did was she uh quickly uh got a tea ready for me and she was bringing the tea to me uh, uh when i was getting dressed so uh, i was getting dressed and i just turned back and she was with the uh, tea and what happened was that he spilled all over my shirt obviously i got angry I said what 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 is this chanika you don't have to do this look what happened and the tea was all over my shirt so she said and <laughs> she said, the very next moment i saw she put in the iron on and taking another shirt and ironing so what i did was i got myself cleaned up and uh i went for the meeting and when i when we came home she asked what was the meeting i said yeah that went well so what i'm trying to say again father is uh, even at this stage there are conflicts but these things resolve quite faster and uh, than before because we have a good understanding with each other so at this stage also father like not only verbally but even with our expressions even we could communicate with each other we are we have studied each other so well like when i am upset and chian only have uh, uh, understood that i have wrinkles on my forehead so he always asking me why are you having wrinkles what's bothering you is there anything troubling you so he keeps on asking me until i Uh, come uh, i put it out so it's so wonderful that uh, even though i don't tell it to him he realizes through my expressions 
but I go through and it's so nice like uh, to have an understanding husband. So I think it's really nice to uh, uh, come to this stage. Like though we not, as she said, not that we don't have conflicts, but we, we uh, resolve fast and also we heal fast and we get back to normal soon. Something also Father I'd like to mention is like not like the first stage, the romantic stage. Uh, I think uh, at this at that stage we were not really showing our true selves because it was like you we know wearing mask on our face. You know we were not showing. Because I was a man with a lot of anger. I never wanted to show that to Chanika because I'm sure she would have got scared at that time. So, but at this stage things are much different and we are very open. We don't. I don't need to eat binge-alls, right? I can be eating pork, right? Because I know she knows what I like and she knows about my feelings very well. So it's very easy to live, not like those days, because it's very, uh, you know, we are all open. All right. Now, again, it's very interesting when you listen to your experiences related to the five stages. Uh, anyone who listens to you, I did. I'm sure the weavers did it themselves that you both have now learned to see the other person as he is and as she is. You know he's not changed completely and she knows that you know that she she's not changed completely and vice versa. Now when you go come to this stage I think one of the important things that you both, I mean, from my analysis of what you said, it takes a lot of inner spirituality to be able to, to have that capacity. Okay, he's still the man that he is, but I'm okay with it. And she's still the woman that she is, of course, slightly changed, but I'm all right with it. So how do you answer a couple who would say, you know, I find it really difficult to be what you are in. You know, it's just that I don't like the way he is or just the way that she is. I want that person to be different. What would be your answer to them, if at all they go to that? Uh, Father, what, uh, it's actually uh, the level of communication, Father. Because you need to always speak out about your feelings. If you don't speak out, we don't need to know about each other, right? Even what she gets upset for. First thing, I think uh, people need to be open out. And if somebody is, you know, wanting to keep silent, I always ask Janika, come on, please tell me what's troubling you. That makes her open out. And uh, to our listeners also, what I'm saying, Father, it's. Uh, uh, first, we need to understand what the issue is, because otherwise we keep repeating the same same issue, and then 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 how we adapt to each other uh, as a couple. And also, Father, if there are other things like that, we can change, and also there are uh, uh, things that we cannot change, but we have to understand that. Likewise. Now, me being an introvert, I cannot change. It's I'm born with that uh, quality. quality. So, uh, but there are I there, there are places where I changed my ways, like trying to uh, work on time and trying to uh, make a list and things like that. So we have to understand what are what are the qualities that we can change and what th that we cannot, and we have to accept it. Even a dancing couple father, when you first start to give a dance, there is always that you try, you know, uh, you know, uh, step on each other. But but eventually you start dancing, and then you see a beautiful couple on the floor having a beautiful dance. That is also father with a little bit of practice. So this is also something very much similar. When 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 he takes the front uh, step forward, the other needs to take a step back. This wonderful conversation with Shan and Chamika in terms of the theory of five stages of marriage. I believe uh, there are people who are listening to us who have been with us during this hour 
who may have their own questions. So I believe that both Shan, Shan, Shan and Chanika, Chanika will be able to, to answer them. So over to you, the audience. Thank you, Father Patrick. And thank you, Shian and Shanika. Uh, I mean, before going, I, there's, uh, there's just one question. I, I'll take that up soon. So uh, just to thank Father Julian Patrick again for bringing out the stages of marriage beautifully so that a lay person can understand in simple terms the romantic stage, the disappointment and disillusionment, differentiation and acceptance, modulation and integration, and the mature stage. And thank you very much, Shian and Shanika, uh, for bringing out your experiences, both positive and negative, so that we all could understand and relate to the stages. I know it's not easy to bring out lives experiences. Uh, just one question. Uh, I think uh, it's for Father. Uh, the question is about the name of the psychologist who proposed the theory of stages of marriage, Father. Is that Sheila Sharp? Or? Yes, it is Sheila Sharp who did this research over a period of time. And uh, she wrote a book called The Ways We Learn. You know, uh, it's very interesting how uh, the psychologist wanted to study the, the complexities of marriage life because one of the common uh, observations of any person who lives in this world is the, the very, uh, I would say, the, uh, the, the very complex nature of marriage because you may have a couple who is so much in love with each other and uh, they don't see anything that may go wrong in their relationship. But over a period of time, this beautiful relationship goes into pieces. And it's not that they are evil people in themselves, but people who are ordinary with their own spirituality, whatever the religion they belong to, but destroying themselves because they do not know how to how to merge with each other in this beautiful way that she later found because some couples have the best of intentions but they do not know the skills so some couples want to somehow work out their marriages but they don't understand the inner psychology of it so that is why this research was done. And then, of course, as you know, it is done in statistically. You, you interview and you do all these uh, conversations and uh, go through the experiences. It's a very hard work as for any, res any research work, especially uh, research on marriages is not very easy because for each couple, the experiences are unique. You know, no two couple would have the same experience because we are two different individuals coming from different backgrounds and the merging of the individuals is also very unique. You can't uh, actually say that I have had it. For example, Shanika and uh, Shan has said that they went through this this way. But we may also have a couple who would, for example, start right away into disappointment and dissolution on a stage, you know. Maybe after I have had couples where in my work, in the first stages of marriage, they are miserable with each other. So they, they, they may start with the disappointment and the solution stage, and then later on move on to romantic stage and move on like that. And so therefore, it's a very complex kind of a study, but she did it. And then I believe for anyone who understand the, the very underlying psychology of it, that this will be useful because just because you are disappointed with each other, you don't have to just leave your relationship. You don't have to think that it's over and it cannot be done if you have had what you call love. 
So I believe it's a, it's a great contribution in the science of psychology that somebody was able to initiate this and come out with this uh, theory. Thank you, Father. Uh, I think the questions are coming now. Uh, and uh, this is, I think, also to Father. It's, it's about, can you explain how the physiological maturity of the husband or wife impacts these stages? The physiological maturity of the husband or wife impact these stages? Uh, of course, it's a very important question because uh, for any relationship to be successful and workable, you need to have certain level of psychological maturity. You know, in the science of psychology, they say, for example, now I am 57 years old, but psychologically I can be like 13, 14 years old, you know, like I act immaturely and I don't know how to understand that other person is different. I want only my way and I don't want to think that the other person is different. So if you have a greater level of immaturity, psychological immaturity, maybe all these stages are difficult to achieve. Now, that is why they say even in a Catholic marriage, we always want to find out whether the, whether the couple or the, the two partners are psychologically normal. That's very important because if you are abnormal, for example, if you are a person who is suffering from some sort of a psychological disorder, working out these stages will be nearly impossible because you have to even to be in the romantic stage, some couples would definitely be <laughs> finding that a very difficult thing because you don't know how to be romantic with each other. Why? Because you're not psychologically not a normal person. So therefore, as you said, going through these five stages is possible if you are a psychologically a normal person. You know that you are an individual, that the other person is different, and I have to give in in order to take in. So if that is not there, then this five stages will be a non-entity in their relationship. Those marriages cannot even be called marriages. That's why in the Catholic Church, we always say there are no divorces, but we always say a marriage that has not consummated. That means there has been no marriage because in order to be married, you have to be a mature individual. That is why in the Catholic tradition, we always say that you take your time, learn about each other, have full knowledge of the other partner, and have full freedom in your choice, and also give full consent to this relationship before you even call it a marriage. You see, that's the key here. You have to be psychologically normal and spiritually ordinary in order to be in the sacrament of marriage. Thank you, Father. Uh, Indrajit from Canada, I mean, he, he's, he, he, he says, I mean, he was 20 years married and when he got married, he never knew about the stages, etc. But he mentions that his wife is an introvert. He is also an introvert. He's asking, how do you explain that? And they've been happily married for 20 years. Two introverts. Any views on that, Father? All right. Now, two, two introverts, yes. <laughs> it's very interesting. You know, it, it doesn't mean that, for example, in the case of uh, Shan and Shamika, he is an extrovert and she is an introvert. So that doesn't mean that two introverts or two extroverts cannot be happy in their marriages. But you see, the key here is, of course, this comes from the psychological theory of Carl Jung, who found the personality types. So what he said in his theoretical postulation is that uh, when you have two different personalities, you know, no couple would be exactly the same. You know, it's not only your introversion, extroversion. You also have what you call the, uh, the feeling types and thinking types, and also the intuitive types and sensei types, you know, these are basically what this whole typology theory is all about, which I don't think I can explain here. But 
just because you are true introvert that doesn't mean that you are a perfect match because sometimes you have introverts who are thinking types or extroverts who are feeling types you know if you go to ex explain this it will take some time but anyway there are differences of course at the same time you can have two introverts which means that that will make it interesting but at the same time maybe there will be little excitement because they don't have the conflicts that you talk about here you see so in a way marriages need to have some sort of level of differences because when you do have differences the 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 intensity of the relationship is high you know uh, when you study the psychology of marriage which i have learned those long years they say e even to have a good sex you need to have good fight because when you have had a good fight you can have good sex you see now i'm sure those of you who are married would know about it more than myself but then anyway uh, having conflicts and having differences is good the only thing is you need to know how to be with it that's the challenge thank you father just one more question <laughs> uh one second father Father, this question is uh, uh, is about okay. Now, the stages of marriage should always be protected under any circumstances, sweet or bitter. Uh, the participant asks, "But is there any time that we should separate?" <laughs> I, I think it's an obvious question. Is there any time that we should separate? I mean, the question. Sages of marriage should always be protected under any circumstances, sweet or bitter. But is there any time that we should separate? <laughs> uh, a very interesting question because uh, you see, when you have any marriage, uh, there is no way that you can idealize any marriage because uh, when it comes to any relationship, not only in a marriage but also in uh, in any other. Uh, relationship at work or whatever if you are with the other person 24/7 you know it will be too much because there is this need in order for any relationship to be normal you need to have time for each other to be by yourself now i know for example there have been couples where uh, most of the time it's women who want to be always with her man you know you don't want him to go any place you don't want him to have any other conversations it's all about be with me and don't leave me you know that's not healthy either because in in the psychology of any normal human being you need to have time for yourself and with the other person the more you have that separation time where you have your own space you go to work or you are with yourself then it makes it easier because too much of anything is good for nothing they say you know for example you you should have a good wife and a good husband but that doesn't mean that you have to be all over each other you know you need to be normal and of course it's explained in another psychological theory which says that for any relationship you need to have time of separation and also time of integration because that's again a very important dimension of a healthy marriage and a healthy relationship thank you father i think we have uh, just time for one one last question time is also running out and the question is father uh, if a couple is matured if they are matured a matured personality is is it possible to prolong the romantic stage and if 
even if they go to another stage, revert back quickly with minimal adjustments, right? Assuming it's a matured couple. Yes, I believe in our explanations, it was also mentioned when you are a mature couple or when you are in the fifth stage of mature, uh, mature love, as they call it, that doesn't mean that you don't have disappointments with each other, that you don't have romantic stage because it's again romantic stage at a different level, you know, because, you know, like, for example, when you listen to teenagers who are in love, you know, they would have these romantic experiences where uh, I have heard sometimes uh, boys or girls, especially girls tell me, you know, when I see my boyfriend, I feel like I'm in the clouds or whatever, you know, that's the, that's the very, uh, I would say, teenage love where the romanticism is, is very shallow, but there is a romantic nature into it. But it's very different when you have gone through all these stages and become a mature couple and you're in the mature love stage, but you may not necessarily feel that you are in the cloud nine, but at the same time, there is a different experience of romantic experience in the mature love stage because it's not shallow, it's very deep and it's not shaken. It's not something that will fall apart just because there is a conflict or problem or whatever. And also it comes out powerfully when you have a, a conflict because in a, in a immature, immature relationship where romantic, we, we may call it romantic, but uh, just as it is very exciting and uh, you are all over each other, but anything serious can bring it all down. But it's very different in a mature love relationship because you have gone through life. You're a different person now. And you know the, the good and the bad. You know the positive and the negatives. So you don't, you don't fall apart just because you have a problem. So it's, it's different. And also, as I said earlier, mature love does not mean that you don't have to be in disappointment. You will have different disappointments, but you deal with it differently. You have your differentiation and acceptance, but you do it differently because sometimes this learning to dance can also be very different. You know, if you, you learn a certain type of dancing and then you go to another type of dancing. So the, the skills are different. Skills are to be learned. So in the mature love stage, you go through all these things all over again, but there is a certain amount of steadfastness as it were. There is a certain amount of maturity and also it's strong. It may, it may not necessarily fall apart just because uh, things are different. Now, for example, that is one of the reasons why we have couples struggling through this lockdown. Because if you are in a mature love stage, you may be tired of each other. You may get angry, but then that doesn't make you go into a separation or divorce because you have to be with each other for a long time. So the, the way that you deal with the, with the surroundings, the circumstances will be very different when you are in the mature love stage. Thank you, Father. And on behalf of uh, the family apostolate of St. John Dalbastoni's church, Palavatta, headed by our parish priest, very reverend Dr. Anthony Fernandepulle. We thank you very much, Father Julian Patrick, Shian and Shanika, for joining the webinar tonight. And this will not be possible, the webinars will not be good if not for all the participants who joined today. So keep, please keep uh, patronizing our webinars we have it on a monthly basis. And next month, we will be having a session on Mother Mary's intercession for families. So please be on the lookout for our webinar flyers. So thank you very much once again. And I can I hand the mic back to Father Julian Patrick to conclude the session with a small prayer.
let us pray. God Almighty Father, you have created us, each and every one of us, in your own image and in your likeness. You are the source of all eternal love. In the sacrament of marriage, you have called your children to know and experience the depth of your love by being with each other, sharing life together in good times and in bad, in health and in sickness. Bless all your children to know the beauty of eternal love as they love each other in the context of marriage. Let your love cover all your children and enrich them in their struggles and be with them till they breathe their last. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.